Business Network coverage of the second presidential debate. Live from Washington University in St. Louis, here is Neil Cavuto. All right, welcome everybody. Well, Donald Trump has just deployed the nuclear option. What some people said was not in the making has indeed just happened. Minutes ago, Donald Trump at a table with Paula Jones and Rita Shelton and Juanita Broderick and blasts from the past that seem to say, I might say offensive things, that is Donald Trump. These people have witnessed Bill Clinton doing far more offensive things, no less than Juanita Broderick. First and foremost, to speak. Listen. I'm Juanita Broderick, and I'm here to support Donald Trump. I tweeted recently, and Mr. Trump retweeted it, that actions speak louder than words. Mr. Trump may have said some bad words, but Bill Clinton raped me, and Hillary Clinton threatened me. I don't think there's any comparison. All right, to say that has obviously uh, changed the environment going into this debate would probably be an understatement, but this appeared live on Facebook just moments ago. Donald Trump surrounding himself with women who said that uh, uh, Bill Clinton went much further with them than the words that Donald uh, Trump was using some 11 years ago. Let's just say it has completely changed the context and the tone of tonight's debate and could likely mean dominating that debate. Connell McShane on this sudden development. Connell. Sudden and remarkable, Neil, in so many ways. You think there'll be a point at, at some point of this campaign where we stop being surprised, but clearly that point will not be tonight. We're told by the pool reporters who were traveling with Donald Trump this evening that they were told that they were being taken to the Four Seasons Hotel here in St. Louis for what was supposed to be a photo op of Donald Trump debate prepping. Instead, they got what you just showed us, so these four women standing or sitting uh, with Mr. Trump there, uh, Paula Jones, Kathy Shelton, Juanita Broderick, and Kathleen Willey. Now, on Broderick, who you mentioned and we heard from a moment ago, there was a Donald Trump tweet earlier today that gave us a preview that she's a name that might come up this evening in the debate uh, for some perspective. And uh, a look back at history. Uh, Ms. Broderick is someone who has uh, accused former President Clinton of rape um, in the late 1970s, an accusation that has never been proven, didn't come public until 1999. But Trump has hinted, did so on Twitter earlier today, and now clearly in person, that he may bring up her name and now others in response to the controversy that has been surrounding him and had previously been the elephant in this spin room and in every room surrounding the Republican Party going into this debate, and that's those leaked Access Hollywood um, videos of Donald Trump speaking in vulgar uh, terms about women. Now, Trump campaign officials have been saying throughout the day today that they expected that topic, the leaked videos, to come up, not only come up in the debate, but come up right at the top of the debate, possibly be the first question out of the gate. Now, there are some other questions surrounding Mr. Trump, Neil. I should tell you that the Indianapolis Star has reported on his running mate, Mike Pence. They've just reported within the last hour or so that Mr. Pence is in what they describe as a wait and see mode now, publicly supporting Trump, but waiting to see how he does at tonight's debate before deciding how to go forward. Now, the Wall Street Journal had reported that Pence was out there telling donors he was fully supportive of Trump. That was this morning, but this is tonight. So that's another uh, development that we're watching. Now, as for Hillary Clinton, as we get closer to the debate, she did not come here to Washington University for a walkthrough, which is not unusual. She didn't do it at Hofstra uh, either, but as you know, she has issues of her own to deal with. The um, leaked transcripts of these Wall Street speeches and emails of hers, so that's something that she would expect to come up tonight. But this Donald Trump press event now uh, does, to your point, uh, change things, it would appear, and we'll see how it's handled, um, you know, less than an hour from now. It's a town hall format, this debate, so you'll have two moderators and members of the audience asking questions. Just about anything could happen. Some might argue it already yeah. has, Neil. Yeah, just about uh, has. Uh, Connell, thank you very much. A.J. Delgado is joining me right now, the Trump senior advisor. Uh, did you have a heads up this was going to happen? Well, I think um, regardless, I think it's an imperative move that was made by the campaign because when so you, you have... So didn't, you didn't get a heads up? Well, no, I was not involved in this. How but do you feel about I, it? I fully support it, Neil, because I think when you have the Hillary Clinton campaign trying to create this false narrative based on an old audio where Mr. Trump was obviously speaking inappropriately, sure, but using hyperbole, and they're trying to cast him as being anti-women, 
Hillary Clinton, of all people, the woman who only a week ago, the New York Times, even the New York Times itself, wrote up an article on how she apparently hired a private investigator, investigator to go after Jennifer Flowers. We have to bring this to light. They, so they I, I, I understand Trump's what's man. going on here. I'm not obviously saying, look, I might have said this is Donald Trump, some offensive things. Mm -hmm. Bill Clinton did them. Now, that uh, doesn't apply to, you know, Kathy Shelton, a young a woman, a girl at the time, underage girl, who uh, was allegedly raped by an older man. Um, Hillary Clinton defended the older man, saying right. essentially that this uh, young girl might have been provocative in her actions. So leaving that aside, how does he go with the debate then? Does, does he start out with the first question, you know, for Hillary Clinton, and thus keep carrying this forward for the rest of the debate? Well, obviously, there will be a question, whether it's from a moderator or an audience member, about Mr. Trump and women. And I want to see him hit hard on what Hillary Clinton's real record is with women. Somebody who hired a private investigator to go after and dig up dirt and shame a woman whose only crime was falling victim to the charms of a predatorial Bill Clinton. All right, but by having this here, he's, he's utilized the, the so-called nuclear option. In other words... They forced him to. So, all right, I, I understand that. But are you okay? Are you comfortable with the debate that could be 90 minutes of this? If it comes down to that, Neil, it, it, then it comes down to that. I would but hope it doesn't. But isn't that potentially risking, maybe in Mr. Trump's mind, for justifiable reasons, a scorched earth policy? Any, whatever chance he has to make inroads, it's not going to happen. Well, I think he can make inroads with bringing this up. I think the American public, especially younger audiences, aren't familiar with Hillary Clinton's record, dubious record, towards women that crossed her path. And I think the American voters, especially women voters, deserve to hear the truth. Do you think that right now, the way this is going, uh, shows that either Mr. Trump thinks his chances are narrowing to get to win this election? And he wants to take everybody out, or, or what? No, I think he wants the American public to have the full information about who he is. His record speaks for himself. His pro-women platform speaks for itself. But I think the American public hasn't really had, because the media protects her, the liberal media protects her so much, hasn't really well, had I, a good glimpse speak, at I didn't Hillary. want to jump on you there, but I sure. do have a statement from Hillary Clinton on this. Oh. We're not surprised to see Donald Trump continue his destructive race to the bottom. Hillary Clinton understands the opportunity in this town hall to talk to voters on stage and in the audience about the issues that matter to them, and this stunt doesn't change that. If Donald Trump doesn't see that, that's his loss. As always, she's prepared to handle whatever Donald Trump throws her way. So was the New York Times in a race to the bottom, Hillary, when they wrote about your disgusting exploits against Jennifer Flowers and hiring a private investigator? Were they in on this race to the bottom? I don't think so. Maybe they were just writing an article about news that's relevant and the American women voters deserve well, do to you know. think then, is this aimed at going beyond the media and all of a sudden now trying to reach out to average folks at home to put this in perspective. I heard from one Trump loyalist who was saying, this is all about setting the record straight. He right. says bad stuff. Bill Clinton did bad stuff. But I want to go back to Hillary Clinton. Wouldn't that actually make her look more like a sympathetic figure? No, because Hillary Clinton herself did bad stuff. Juanita Broderick says that meeting Hillary Clinton after what happened made chills go down her spine. Hillary Clinton is the one who allegedly hired the private investigator to dig up dirt and shame an innocent woman who was a victim as well, Jennifer Flowers. This is not about Bill Clinton's and right, You're a senior advisor. You're also a female. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I, I, don't Apparently. Want, I don't want to be patronizing <laughs> about that. The fact that the campaign didn't bounce is all for you. Uh -huh. It's kind of a big deal. No, I don't think so. I trust there are other advisors that are female. Mr. Trump right. is surrounded by powerful, strong women. There are others who are involved and in that And you don't think decision. this will hurt him with women or that this will make him look desperate? And not at all. We okay. deserve to know the truth. Don't patronize us by not giving us the truth, media. Fair, Fair enough. <laughs> A.J. Thank Delgado, you, thank you very much. I want to bring my uh, colleague and friend Lou Dobbs into this. Lou, as you were mentioning on your show, Obviously, this changes the dynamics going into this debate. How, how so, you think? Neil, uh, Neil, we're having a, a little... Uh, I'm sorry. A, a I'm sorry, Lou. behind me. Yeah. Go ahead. Go, uh, no, I'm just saying, how do you think this changes the debate? I mean, he's obviously chosen to fight fire with fire, and I'm, I'm wondering no. whether this dominates the entire debate tonight. 
I, I don't know whether it'll dominate the whole debate, but it was dominating all of the public discussion leading up to this debate. I think you would agree. You mentioned the, you used the expression scorched earth. I think we have to start with the scorched earth policy that's been uh, put in motion here uh, by really two, two causal agents. One was WikiLeaks uh, with a Friday document dump against Hillary Clinton, and the second was the uh, NBC video, uh, Billy Bush tape, uh, in which uh, they attacked uh, Donald Trump or whether it came from the Clinton campaign. These are scorched earth initiatives that are now four, more than 48 hours old, so we're well into uh, to that particular political strategy. Where it leads, we don't know, because yeah. in point of fact, uh, I, in point of fact, this is a this is a central issue now in the campaign. The fairness of the national liberal media, why it did not listen to those four women. As I watched, Neil, you know, as we're covering this, those four women standing next to Donald Trump, many of them have been in the news for two decades and have not been able to get their story told by a mainstream media that made a that litigated it and judged that they would not, their, whatever, uh, their charges would not receive the, the attention because, in point of fact, there's an ideological alignment between the Clintons and the national liberal media. And that is the only reason. For Paula Jones settled out of court. Uh, money uh, was paid by the Clintons to settle sexual harassment charges. She's treated as if, uh, you know, she is a, a fiction writer. When you see four brave women, I think, to stand there with Trump and tell their stories that have uh, made their their in, most of their adult lives painful uh, beyond anything we can imagine. All right, Lou, we'll follow very closely. By the way, we've got mixed reports whether these women who uh, Donald Trump had with him today are invited to the debate tonight. We don't believe so. That doesn't mean that Donald Trump still can't make room for them in those seats, but they're all accounted for, I believe. So they will probably not be in the debate room, but of course this issue will be, and it has changed the tone for a debate that was we were told was supposed to open up with Donald Trump when he had the chance to talk to apologize again for his comments made 11 years ago, caught on tape. But now to remind people, well, whatever I've said, this guy, uh, this woman is married to, I'm debating tonight, has done far worse, and she has enabled it, she has accommodated it. And let's just say, if you're looking for a serious back and forth on the role of government in uh, various programs, let's just say that might have gone, gone away. More from St. Louis after this. All right, it was Bedlam in there, uh, a Facebook discussion that was uh, broadcast nationally on Facebook where uh, uh, you had Donald Trump bring together accusers of uh, Hillary and Bill Clinton over the years who have said that they have practiced far worse than what Donald Trump has said. To what Donald Trump had said uh, in the controversy of that tape uh, from, from 11 years ago, uh, saying some, some pretty outrageous things about women. Uh, Billy Bush was part of that tape, of course, the, uh, one of the hosts of the Today Show in the after hours, 9 a.m. Uh, NBC just suspended him, uh, pending further review. We don't know for how long, but because of that, Billy Bush has been suspended again, pending further review from that 9 a.m. Remember, it's an extended uh, Today Show, and he, he is out for a while. Um, so a lot happening, just minutes before this big debate. Uh, Steve Case is here with us right now. He recently announced that he was supporting Hillary Clinton. And uh, now, now, now we've got some craziness going on. What do you make of it? It's a little crazy. I think it's a sad day for a democracy. I was coming to the debate hoping we'd talk about jobs and economic growth, startups. Last week I spent a week on the road on our Rise of the Rest tour visiting places like Nebraska, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, great entrepreneurs building great companies. They're, but they're worried about the future. They want to know where things are going. I hope the debate focuses on some of those issues, how it's going to really impact people's lives. Uh, this is, a, you know, obviously the news of the, of the moment, but I hope uh, the de debate doesn't just focus on that. We've got to focus on how we move this country forward. Do you think people were, to hear the Trump folks tell, disproportionately interested in what he said 11 years ago and giving it undue attention. 
So this was his way to respond to that? Well, I, personally, I thought what, uh, what, what Trump said was reprehensible. I was disappointed uh, and, and, and uh, thought it was terrible. I think doubling down uh, tonight, I don't think it's helpful to his campaign. I don't think it's helpful to, to the country. I think most people out there view this as, as not the main event. It's how, how do we make sure this country remains the most innovative entrepreneurial nation? What are the policies around investment incentives? How do you change taxes? How do you change regulations? How do you level the playing field so everybody everywhere has a shot at the American dream? I think that's what well, we need to have a topic. Well, maybe they No, I definitely see what you're saying, but maybe they they were concerned you're going to be that's Jesse Jackson there and going to make his way to the seats. He's a guest, I believe, of Hillary Clinton. But um, that the Trump folks are saying you're going to drag me down in the mud, I'm going to take you with me. I understand the response. I don't think it's a smart response on his part, but I'll, I'll leave the, you know, the, right. the punditry to, to, to you folks. I think what this country needs is a, is a new direction that takes us forward and, and really makes sure that uh, everybody has a shot, at the, as I said, at the American dream, and particularly we bet on our startups all over the country, not just Silicon Valley, not just New York, which is why we're doing these that, gonna, that neither side is going to get a chance to do that. I do that, worry about it. Hope, hopefully that won't be the case, because this is not the main event for this, for this country. I'm not, I'm not diminishing what happened. Right, I right. think it's a, a big problem, and I, I think I think we, we, I'm, I'm sad that it's become the, the, the topic of the, of the moment when we should be talking about the future of the, of the country and how there are a lot of people who are frustrated about government. There are a lot of people who feel left behind by globalization and digitization. We need to figure out how to move forward and how to really back the next wave of entrepreneurs all across the country if we're going to remain the most innovative you know, entrepreneurial nation, have the strongest economy. Let's have some of that discussion and not just discussion on, on, these, on these other issues. You know, see, we had, obviously, uh, Donald, a Donald Trump person on a minute ago, and one of the things that she was arguing was there seems to be a great deal of fixation on what Donald Trump said 11 years ago, as I guess there should be. Um, even she acknowledged that. But, but very little about what Hillary Clinton has said or emails have seemed to intimate from as recently as months ago. And, and this is where I want to ask you as a business guy. Do you believe what she says? In other words, if the emails are indicating that she is far cozier to Wall Street and banks than she seems to indicate on the stump, that she's far more open to unfettered trade and all of that than she appears on the stump, uh, that she was much more worried about vetting these Syrian refugees than she appears on the stump, they're saying you, you can't trust her. No, I trust her. I, 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 none of us are perfect. We all made mistakes, but I do trust her. And as you know, when we talked about well, this a few months ago. Well, that's what you're saying is a battle of negatives here. But, right? but the reason I came out and endorsed her, and as you know, I've never endorsed a candidate before. I've tried to stay out of politics, focus on policy, is I thought her, her, she released a very thoughtful, detailed set, set of uh, policies around how to move the country forward, around you economic didn't mind growth. The tax hike and, and Trump has not. You He's didn't been, mind the tax hike portion. I'm sorry? You didn't mind the tax hikes. I, I think, I, of course, nobody wants to pay more taxes, right. but I think the Trump uh, suggestion around cutting taxes and blowing up what I think would blow up the deficit, I don't think moves the country forward. So sure, I don't want to pay you more taxes, but I'm willing to pay my blow, fair share. You don't share. think her spending would blow up the deficit? I, I have some concerns. I don't yeah. want to make sure. You know, sometimes maybe she thinks the government is too much the answer, and sometimes maybe a little too pro-regulation. But the bottom line is Trump has not put any policies in the right. last year in place around how to move the country forward, around startups, economic growth, so leveling the playing field for all. you don't believe his tax cuts will do that. But, but you could, you're right. You can argue I, that. But let me ask you this. It's, a, it, it's probably a wacky psychological point, but maybe you can help me with this, that the two of them are going to be up there in that debate stage in a town hall format with very high negatives. And I think they want to, this is just my opinion, they, they want to escape this night being the least negative. And is which that is, such a goal? Which is sad. No, I, I, think, I think it's not a goal. I think the goal should be how do you lay out a framework, a, a, a plan to move the country forward in a way that's more inclusive and gives opportunity to more people in more places. And I think that should be more of the discussion. I hope it is. I understand this has now become an issue. I hope it gets dealt with early in the debate, and then we spend the rest of the time talking about jobs, economic growth, startups, entrepreneurs, and making sure everybody has a shot at the American dream. That's, I think, what most people in this country care about. You know, one other thing that's come up in the conversation about what Donald Trump said even 11 years ago is that all guys talk this way. Do you? I'll say, say that all guys no, talk this way. That's ridiculous and it's offensive. All guys don't talk that way. I don't talk that way. I don't know most people talk that way. And the reality is he's 70 years old, not 13 years old. And, and so I, I get to, to suggest this is just the way it's done and all men are like this is, is ridiculous and offensive to me as, as a man. Also, by the way, offensive to me as, as a father with five kids, four of whom are girls. This is not the kind of leadership we need for this country. But that's not why I endorsed Hillary Clinton. I endorsed her because I believe she has the best policies around economic growth, job creation, startups 
startups, entrepreneurs continuing to build on our 250 year history as the most innovative entrepreneurial nation in, in the world. Trump could have put policies in place. He is a business person. He is an entrepreneur. He has not. He's been, been critical. Basically, on basically, a, but he's know, been critical on an issue I know near and dear to you on this issue where we're ceding the internet to this international group and he doesn't like that. We invented the internet and we shouldn't be sharing we it. We did invent the internet. It's now a global phenomenon with billions of users and at some point the, the governance of that should be more of a global governance. So you're I okay with I'm, what's I'm going okay on? I'm okay with it, yes. But I, I think the main thing here is how do we make sure everybody has a shot at the American dream. And last week, as I said, I spent time on our bus rise, rise the rest meeting thousands of entrepreneurs who have great ideas. How do we make sure they have access to the capital, the right regulatory invite, and the right investment incentives so they can build the businesses that are the next Google or, or Facebooks or Chipotle's or Under Armour's. That's what we need to have more of a discussion on in this debate, and I hope that's what will happen. Steve Case, thank you very, very much. Thanks, Neil. And a couple of things have changed since we arranged this interview, right? Well, uh, it happens in, in well, news, right? Indeed. All right, we'll see. All right, uh, from what we understand as we are now about uh, 35, 36 minutes away from the debate is the dynamics have changed mightily, haven't they? First the tape, then Donald Trump's response to fight fire with fire. Some would call it Sherman S. Some would call it nuclear. Uh, right now, it has changed the entire context and tone of this evening. And anyone who was uh, worried right now about a debate that might not uh, score as many households because one prominent network is covering a football game, uh, and so it would rob people of the chance to break some records for second debates, I, 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 think, I, I think it could still happen after this. put me through um, something that you've never put a 12-year-old through. Um, and she says she's for women and children. And she was asked last year on what happened, and she says she's supposed to defend whether they did it or not. And now she's laughing on tape, saying she knows they did it. You went through a lot. Yes, yes, sir, I did. All right, now keep in mind, Kathy Sheldon is not a Bill Clinton accuser, a Hillary Clinton accuser, 12 years old, raped by an older man. Hillary Clinton representing that older man. He got a sentence stayed, uh, and she was made to feel the victim. And, of course, she didn't, as a 12-year-old at the time, and later, years later in court, uh, could not believe what happened and what transpired. She, by the way, will be in uh, the debate hall tonight, as will Paula Jones, Juanita Broderick, and, of course, Kathleen Wiley. So I don't know whether that was prearranged, but I think I had said earlier on that it would have been too late to get them in. If they had been cleared to go in, it was because they were already slated to be in, which means as surprising as this uh, press conference was that Donald Trump arranged less than an hour ago, he had already checked them in as guests. Uh, we don't know the timing of all of that, but we do know that Donald Trump's honorary New York chair is with us now, Carl Palladino, former Republican gubernatorial candidate. Carl, do you know about these women and that Donald Trump was planning uh, to have this event and furthermore to have them attend tonight's debate? No, Neil, I, I was unaware of it, but I'm awful happy he's done it. I, I listened to Krauthammer a few minutes ago and, uh, and he said, he described it pretty apropos. Uh, uh, Trump has two ways to go. He could, he could either come out as the soft guy apologizing and accepting the fact that the press has a right to go and intrude on him at this late stage in the election, or he could come out and, and uh, with a scorched earth attitude and, and throw it right back at him and fight fire with fire. I think most of the Trump supporters uh, uh, will appreciate the fact that he's going to come back hard. Uh, appearances are he's going to come back hard. And uh, he's going to let people know that the real intent of this entire effort is to stop the, the growth of the progressive movement in America and, and to allow the middle class to take their country back. Uh, the mainstream media doesn't seem to get that. They don't have a clue what's going on. They've gone off and marginalized him on, on peripheral uh, issues such as this. And, uh, and now it's time to account to the American people who are going to bring Donald Trump in in November because they've had enough of the same type of stuff where the media is totally controlled by the Washington establishment and spokespeople like Chuck, Chuck Todd, whose show I was on earlier after he, uh, he ended it abruptly, uh, uh, people like that have to be 
have to be told that they have a greater responsibility to the American people than making the decisions for them. They can't make those decisions anymore. And that's part of this, why the American Carl, people are so this, fed up. It, I know what you're saying, and I know as a friend of Donald Trump, you're, you're offended by what has been, uh, in your view, a pylon on the part of the media. But how does this advance that cause? If, if it's a scorched earth, as you said at the outset, and others would agree with that, I agree with that, um, th then does it really advance his game, or does it drag this whole thing down? And uh, obviously, he is angry about I, I the release it, of this tape, but, 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 uh, but now, does this complicate things and compound this to the point where it's he said, she said, he said, she said, and none of these issues that you care about get discussed? Option number one, is, is the option that the, that the mainstream press wants him to take. And that's, it's unacceptable. It's, it's not, uh, this is not a game anymore. They have the to stop thinking of it as a game. The option you're talking about is to apologize, right? So you think that's to apologize, he's apologized well, I think twice, he's he doesn't have he to He has apologized, right? Neil, he's apologized. He said it very clearly, okay? It was a bad remark. It was a bad time. It was street talk, gutter talk, whatever you want to call it. Every man does it. Every man has been involved with it at one point or another in his life. What's really important here is truth and honesty in our government. This is an American revolution. It's not an election. The people are revolting against this Washington establishment control of everything that we think, we do, uh, uh, it's unacceptable. We don't want a continuation of Obama. We've had enough of Obama and the progressives. We want, we want a government that's going to be, for the next 30 or 40 years, that's going to be responsive to the, to the middle class of our country. And we're certainly not going to see that with Hillary appointing the next couple of Supreme Court justices. That's never going to work for us. Do you think that'll ever come up, Carl? Do you think that'll ever come up? And I understand your, your frustration with the process that spent so much time getting into comments and all made many years ago and but but it, it but with, with, uh, with I, Donald Trump doing this I mean we're going to potentially spend 90 minutes going through all of this stuff right potentially you know, I, I, I'm that little guy from Buffalo New York okay I I don't have I, I don't have great influence over what happens uh, in our in our country but here I am very, very determined, okay, to make sure that I've done as an individual everything I can to ensure that we don't go through the same nonsense any longer that we're suffering in America. The people don't know what to tell their kids about the future. There is no future. There's no growth. You can't raise taxes. Trickle-down worked, okay? Uh, uh, James Comey. Uh, is so treacherous, he should resign tomorrow morning. I mean, he's ruined the integrity of the FBI. The, the conspiracy with Loretta Lynch and all the rest of this nonsense, and, and what we're reading, Hillary told the people, told these elitists at, at Goldman Sachs that we were a bucket of losers. The American people are a bucket of losers, which he's speaking to the elitists. Is that the kind of person we want as the president of the United States? I'd rather have a guy right. that appreciates a good-looking woman. That's about it. All right. Uh, Carl Bellino, thank you very much. <laughs> Former New York gubernatorial uh, candidate Donald Trump now has arrived at this debate location right behind me, the back entrance to this building right behind me, and he has dropped a bombshell in the name of Four uh, Bill and Hillary Clinton accusers, Paula Jones, Kathy Sheldon, Juanita Broderick, and Kathleen Wiley, all will be special guests of his at this debate tonight in the same hall where you will have Hillary Clinton's husband, Bill Clinton, and her daughter, Chelsea Clinton, seated nearby. Whoa. We'll have more after this. We're told that uh, Hillary Clinton has arrived at the debate site uh, a few minutes er uh, earlier. Uh, Donald Trump arrived as well. You can see these are the, the student, uh, uh, the audience, by the way, the, the, the panel of average folks, voters, supposedly uncommitted, who will be asking questions tonight. Uh, behind that, uh, sort of out of your audience view, uh, 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 are the part, those who are Hillary Clinton loyalists, those who are Donald Trump loyalists. And uh, a few hundred seats reserved for better than 8,500 students who at this Washington University participate in a lottery to get a chance to watch a little history being made. And now with these latest developments, 
we'll be witnessing quite a bit of history, to put it mildly. Uh, Connell McShane has been following all these fast-moving developments. Connell, spell them all out where we stand. Well, you know, it's interesting, Neil. You were talking about both candidates now being here on site at Washington University, but it's the event that Donald Trump held uh, moments before coming over here that has everybody talking, appearing with these four women broadly identified as Clinton accusers uh, from years ago and doing so at the Four Seasons Hotel and then inviting uh, the four women, Paula Jones, Kathy Shelty, Juanita Broderick, and Kathleen Willie, to be here and be guests of his tonight. Uh, that was seen as a remarkable development. In case you missed it, here's what one of those women, Paula Jones had to say earlier this evening. Listen. Uh, Mr. Trump, because he's going to make America great again. He, and I think everybody else should vote for him. And I think they should all look at the fact that um, he's a good person. He's not um, what other people have been saying he's been, like Hillary. So think about that. Think about that, she says, and uh, I guess some people will be thinking about that. But in, before all of that, Neil, they were thinking about the leaked tape from Access Hollywood that have kind of came out of uh, Donald Trump using vulgar terms and talking about women. And it's widely expected still, and the Trump campaign had been talking about it throughout the day, that that topic would be the first that the audience members uh, brought up and that the moderators possibly followed up upon. So Trump then, you know, holds this event. How does that change things? I mean, quite frankly, we don't know. We're getting closer to the debate right now that I can tell you this spin room has quite a buzz to it. Members of the media, us included, had gathered in the corner of the spin room with cameras and, you know, uh, the, the lights and everything else, uh, expecting some big person to come out and talk to us, but so far no one has. But that's the kind of anticipation and uh, anxiousness and nervousness that there is here moments before this debate. You know, I'm thinking that if Juanita Broderick, Paula Jones, Catherine Willey, uh, Kathy Shelton are going to be in the audience tonight, that means that they could walk out with that audience to the spin room. And they will likely be granting interviews when they leave in the spin room. And that is not unintentional, I'm sure. No, I mean, Neil, when you think about it, and this is uh, not normal in presidential debates, the candidate himself, Donald Trump, has appeared in the spin room. So certainly if he would appear himself, then you would expect the people who he has invited to be honored guests of his uh, at this evening, which is what he's done, uh, would appear. And again, to go back to that earlier topic that I brought up, which was the leaked tr tape and audio of Donald Trump, remember the other news development that we had this evening that I guess I should mention is that it, the Access Hollywood and uh, most more recently N NBC Today Today Show co-anchor Billy Bush was the other guy involved in that, and we just heard from the Today Show that Mr. Bush has been um, suspended indefinitely. So that's the other part of that story that's developed this evening. All right, that's how he was identified as a former host of when you're suspended. We're not leaping here. Uh, for now, uh, he's still technically a host. He, if he just yes, he could return to that job. We don't know if he will. All right, uh, Connell McShane, thank you very much. Kennedy joining me right now. Kennedy, fast-moving developments. I'm just wondering, like, what the heck? I think that's the point of the developments, is to knock everyone off their feet, uh, to keep the Clinton camp on their toes. I think the, uh, the revelations from Friday have made Hillary wildly confident, and this is just something that sends her team into full spin and panic right before the debate, and they really don't have time to react substantially and with the amount of preparation necessary to uh, the press conference. They're obviously thinking their heads are going to go to quick break. They're discussing the ground rules now for this uh, and, and how this will be. It's a town hall format, so obviously the first question we do know will go to Hillary Clinton, and I'm wondering, since the questions apparently have already been arranged, whether they have to come up with new questions. Uh, with a new cycle moving this quickly and yeah. with veteran broadcasters, you would hope that they have the ability to move along with the news cycle and react to these things as is necessary. And then in that audience, keep in mind, it's a small audience. These are the ones who will be part of the, 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 the you know, the town hall, the yeah. average voters who were told are undecided. Um, but now we have the situation in that audience, and it's not a very big audience. Uh, all these four Clinton accusers, uh, then you have Bill Clinton and you have Chelsea Clinton sitting not too far apart. Yeah, that's absolutely right. But, you know, Chelsea Clinton is a grown woman. She's a mom. And, yeah. and she yeah. has inserted herself in this political process with her mother. And, you know, yeah. she is an active surrogate, not only in her mom's campaign, but also the Clinton Foundation. And so, you know, conceivably, she's heard these things before. I would imagine she has. But to say that it adds to a little bit of attention convention is probably an understatement. And I'm thinking of NBC right now, but not with Billy Bush. 
but but having a football game and not being live on this event. Somewhere, <laughs> a programmer at 30 Rock is saying, are we nuts? Picture in picture, baby. Exactly. God we'll bless more right after this, just a few minutes away. Be presented in the questions that come from all right uh hillary clinton arriving on site on the debate side in this building behind me just a few minutes ago uh she made a famous statement regarding uh, those who uh have survived sexual assault that every survivor of sexual assault deserves to be heard believed and supported you can imagine that kellyanne conway of the trump campaign didn't waste a nanosecond retweeting that to say does that go for juanita kathleen kathy and Paul, if so, acknowledge them from the stage tonight. So this should all go pretty well. Uh, this should all be pretty quiet, pretty genteel. Man, I mean, I, I don't know how to handicap this. Kennedy back with me, Trish Regan. Uh, with me in New York. Trish, what do you think? Uh, I think you said it very well earlier when you said he exercised the nuclear option, Neil. Indeed, he did. So it really is a game changer here. It puts her on the defensive more so. I still think he needs to basically come out and reiterate what he said in that videotape message where he apologizes for his uh, atrocious words. Uh, but at the same time, he can make that argument, uh, and clearly he's going to do so, that, look, these were just words. Bill Clinton actually acted in this fashion, and his wife on stage right next to me supported her husband and tried to bury some of those women that are here trying to tell their story tonight. So the challenge for him is to basically still be able to win over some of them, those independent women voters that I think have felt alienated by these comments uh, and do so in a way where he can still talk about policy because I'm telling you people need to hear it they need to hear what he is going to offer that's different you know Kennedy those four accusers are in that audience as I said not sitting too far from uh, the Clinton family and I'm sure the organizers for this debate tonight are trying to say let's stick to the issues or whatever they're going to say I don't even hear it just to say that Hold off on your clapping and all of that nonsense. Uh, how do you think the audience is going to behave? Uh, I don't know that it's necessarily the audience that is the it's wild card members, here. Yeah, right. um, I, I do think that uh, you will have certain members of the audience who are very much supporting Donald Trump still, as we've seen uh, not only at the Paul Ryan rally in By Wisconsin. Way, and, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but uh, you yeah. can notice the cameras are pointed at those in the audience, and I can bet you. They involve these four accusers, maybe Chelsea Clinton and her family. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is the audience now has become a primary focus of the media. Oh, yeah. And did you pictures. notice the look on Bill Clinton's face as they exited the SUV? Uh, that's a look that we saw in 1998 for sure. Chelsea Clinton putting her arm around her mom with a big smile on her face, ushering her mom, Bill Clinton walking a step behind like, do we really have to relive this again? So I think that uh, he is the first casualty. Well, maybe, of the press you know, conference. Trish Regan, real quickly, could neutralize the whole Trump and what he said 11 years ago, and they don't touch it at all tonight. What do you think of that? I, I think that's an interesting hypothesis, and I've heard some people talk about that. But I don't know is either one of them are going to be able to resist, Neil. I really think yeah. that, uh, you know, this is, you know, something that he, he has wanted to go after, he has threatened to go after. He certainly went after uh, bringing those women out there tonight. Uh, she also can't resist needling him, don't forget. She knows that yeah. if she just pokes and prods, she might get a reaction. And so that is going to be a strategy she likely uses and has been programmed to use. Yeah, Chelsea Clinton with her arms over her mother, Bill Clinton following behind. We have seen this walk before. Mm. More to this. All right, normally uh, second uh, presidential debates don't garner nearly the attention of a first presidential debate. And with this one featuring a major network focused on a football game than this event, uh, that was the thinking. That was before Donald Trump changed the dynamics slightly by having some former Clinton accusers uh, sit in that audience and uh, say, add to the tension uh, in that room. Uh, only a few minutes away right now. Uh, Kennedy is with me. Trish Regan is with me. No. Uh, Lou Dobbs is with me. Uh, Lou, 
How does this change the dynamics tonight? Well, the dynamics are changed by uh, a, a further charge and an entrant into this battle, which will be, as we've discussed, epic. And that is the mainstream media, their liberal bias will be in question and on display because each of the women uh, who have accused Bill Clinton uh, and made very serious charges over the course of the past uh, 20 years uh, have been ignored by the mainstream media. And now we're going to see how that plays out in this debate. And already their presence is not simply uh, you know, some distant abstraction, uh, but they are in the room uh, with these two combatants uh, for the 2016 uh, election. Yeah, you know, Trish Regan, uh, all those Clinton accusers are in that audience, so they all exit through the spin room. They could all conceivably talk to the media in the spin room. That could get very interesting. Yeah, I, I imagine they will, too. I mean, it, you know, I think that this is part of the goal here, to get their story out, to change the narrative, Neil. Uh, as he has pointed out, you know, he, he said a, a lot of words, but words are different than actions, and so he's trying to flip this narrative, uh, and he may succeed in doing so. All right, we're going to watch very closely here. You can see the, the, uh, uh, the voters, uh, supposedly uncommitted voters in place on the stage. Hundreds more off stage, including those Clinton accusers, including Bill Clinton, including Chelsea.